Have you guys ever wondered how much power you need to live self-sufficiently out here in the bush on these big adventures? Well, I'm up here filming season eight at the moment, which is just about to kick off. I've got the 79 series cruiser here behind me with my Enerdrive set up in here. So I thought I'd go over exactly what I use it for, you know, what I'm running, laptops, GoPros, all that stuff, cooking, and exactly what it is. And I also have a mate here who's a bit of a professional who's gonna be able to dig deep and, and give you guys the, um, the truth, I suppose. So welcome back to another Three Minute Thursday. Hey, Nige. Do you want to give us a hand quickly? Make yourself look half decent. Now, I've just crashed my drone, so I'm a bit bloody pissed off, but we're going to do this anyway, because tomorrow's Thursday, and I've promised you guys episodes. So, basically, this is what I run here. This is my kitchen, so um, cooking each night, I run an induction cooker, and I'm cooking most nights, unless I'm in the bush, and I'm, I'm eating in the bush, cooking on the fire, I'm boiling rice and cooking like a curry in simmering water. So, um, that uses about 30 amps, I reckon. I don't know what we used last night, but about 30 amps roughly. I'm also charging laptops, uh, laptop probably every day. I'm charging my drone maybe twice a day, two batteries twice a day. Um, GoPro's just constantly charging batteries. Uh, what else am I running in there? Uh, the fridge, the fridge would pull. What? Get over here, mate. We're pretty buggered. We've been up here working on a secret project. I'll give you guys a quick glimpse. Can't see much over there, but. That's it. So we've been up here for about four days. We've got this amazing scenery behind us here. Um, it's been a lot of fun, but we're pretty buggered. And I just crashed the drone, so I'm a bit shook up and frustrated. But the fridge, Bushman fridge, I run 130 litre, and it would pull about- That two amps. Two amps on average? Yep. I got it set to three, three to four, and I'm running the Anadrive Adventure with a 200 amp hour lithium battery, 2000 watt inverter. Yep. Uh, DC to DC, and there's a bit of a secret here. So there's a trick behind all of this, which I'll get to in a second, which I think is the key to making all this work for me. So I've got the DC to DC charger and also a 240 volt um, charger. That's yeah, it. Plus the Simon. So what the Simon does is it allows you to actually put it back to the main screen. So you've got 71 percent in your battery. It tells you the time, so when you're up out late out of bed, you know that your coffee's going to be cold. Um, and we scroll down, so now it gives you. Can't quite see that, sorry. So it's giving you time of charge. Um, Voltage. Yep. Current. And current. So we scroll down, and now you see what you're doing. So at the very top, that takes out. So at the moment, your DC to DC, your solar's putting in 5.3. Your fridge is, your lighting. 0.16. Yep. Fridge, not Zero. on. Inverter's running 0.5. But you look to the top, you see your overall system. So it's taking out these little bits and that's exactly what you you got to play with. So that's the one you want to keep an eye on? That's the one you want to keep an eye on, all right? So forget this one here and this, that's what's actually happening okay. across everything. That's your water, yes? No, it's your temperature. Uh, I'm not tall enough like you. Bloody hell, I said I got an expert. <laughs> <laughs> all your fuses are all up in here. So of course your lights are, is very minimal, auxiliary. And then you've got outlets, which is out the back. And then your fridge is 15. Don't need that high on your fridge, but that's all right. Your water pump, you do. Um, air compressor, you got air compressor in here? Yep. Yep, so you can be 15 amps. Um, so yeah, overall, it, it works a treat. But why have we got this in here? The inverter. No, why have we got this here? The breaker. Yeah, why is I that? Don't, I don't know, that's why I got you. Alright, so if you plug in something here and some, something that's faulty, mm -hmm. um, it'll trick this. Okay. And instead of melting the whole system. Um, what, what if someone had, say, a thousand watt inverter and they put on like a thermo mix? Would yep. that trick that? If they've got one of these, yeah. yes it will. Okay. All right, as a safety, as I say, the thousand watts don't have those. You've got to then put a separate one in oh, okay. to allow that to, which we highly recommend anything on this coming out of 240. Because okay. you'll notice the um, other units that you play with, you can, those got all that built into it. Yeah, yeah, so, it's yeah, all so, so that's it, yeah. So that, that's a pretty cool um, product we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks is the EcoFlow, because I'm running that, I won't give away too much, but I'm running that this trip because I had an accident and this was all last minute. Um, so I'm running that to run my, I'm using that to run my that? freezer. <laughs> Um, so we'll talk about that maybe next week or the week after because I'm really impressed with the EcoFlow gear. But three minute Thursdays, we're going to keep this to three minutes. So basically this is the Enerdrive Adventure. They've got different models, different sizes. This is the big one. It's the it's top of the range. Top of the range. Yep. Um, you can also choose a different size battery. I run a 200 amp hour and for me, 
I actually, actually, even for you guys, you know, if you're traveling with your missus and kids, I wouldn't go any less, I don't think. You have to have it with us. You have to have the big, oh, okay. So if you've got the 2000 watt inverter, you have to go a 200 amp hour battery. battery. You yep. can't go any smaller. Yep. And I think 200 amp hour is, is plenty. I never dropped below. Like this morning I was on 41% because we've been sitting here for three days with half solar, like this, the, you know, I wasn't set up real well. I hadn't run the car for three days. I'm cooking on the inverter, on the induction cooker every night and charging Makita batteries because we're working here and all that stuff. So I was really stuck in the thing dry and I didn't get below 40, but it's just that backup knowing that um, you're never gonna go too low. Now with lithium, you can go to flat or even you don't want to, but. No, you don't want to really go below 20, 20% they talk about, but if you're distressed, you really have to and you do. Um, you've got jump start on top of your battery because as you yeah. know when lithium goes dead flat you've yeah. actually got to wake it back up. You trick it, yeah, yeah. you press a button. Yeah, so it's so pretty simple. On all the on all the inner drive gear, it's all got push buttons on the top, except yeah. for the entry level unit which then you trick it through the end of it. So and if you're gonna go an AGM, well you can only go to like 50, 60 percent. You can drain it to the dead flat, but you'll Just stress the battery to, to maximum. So how many times are you gonna get away with that? Not many. Three or four. Three or four and then you get and your battery's dead. So that's that's the beauty of lithium, you're almost getting nearly twice the amount of power really, effective power. If, if you treat it with respect, you'll get amazing lifestyle out of it. If you abuse it, um, lithium is only going to last as long as you have It's as simple as that. You've got to look after it. Um, everyone says, you know, fully charge it, keep it fully charged. Don't have to. Just sit it up around that 95. It gives it a little bit of up and down, um, put some pressure on it, drain it down, bring it up, make it work. It'll last longer. Well, there you go. Um, the trick, I think, so the key to all of this working is I've changed out my alternator. Now, Battery World did that, and I can't remember, it was a one, 190, 180. 180. And what was in it, a 90? A 90, uh, 90. 90, so I've doubled the size of my alternator, and that makes a hell of a difference. It pumps so much power into this thing. So, like I said, my battery was sitting at 41% this morning. Actually, it might have even dropped to 39 when I cooked breakfast, and now it's up to 72, because I've just been running my car for a bit. Um, and I was watching it will pump in about, it will pump in the full 40 amps. So that DC to DC is a 40 amp plus, and it was pumping in the full 40 because, you know, they're clever, we'll, hey, you can see that. We'll, it. we'll double check that today because we might be able to crank that up about 45 to 48 as well. Okay. So we'll do, check the settings on that today. Because it's 40 plus. It's 40 plus, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so see, this is three minutes. Yeah. yeah, but it's. <laughs> you talk a lot. How do you fit all that into three minutes? I'm pretty sure Nigel's been talking the whole time. I, just... I want to touch on solar on another episode because I want to go right into it for you guys. But my panel on the roof is a 200 or 180? 180. 180. A 180. So 180 uh, watt solar panel. And the most of, the best I've seen is 11 amps coming in, which Nigel reckons is pretty bloody good. It's amazing. Because yeah, yeah. 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 uh, it was that, in a drive? In a drive. It's yeah. an in a drive yeah. solar panel. Yeah. So that's impressive. Um, yesterday we also plugged in a second solar panel which is the best I've seen and we're going to do an episode on that one pretty much on its own um, and we were playing around with it and tweaking all the angles getting it all right and I saw 20, what was the most it came in? 23.6. 23.6 yeah. amps coming in yeah. through solar. Yeah. Yeah. It blew my mind as well. It was amazing. Yeah, that was the cool. Efficiency out of that panel yeah. is just next level. So if you're looking for a solar panel, stick around. We'll do a um, an episode probably next week on solar because it was it's really impressive and we'll show you how it works. And that's the key to all of this, you know. Rather than go a bigger battery, well, it's that it's the balancing yeah. act. Hey? Yeah. Rather than go a huge lithium battery, just get your solar right as well, and um, it really is a balancing act between the two. The hardest thing to get right is the amount you draw out of it. If you can replace it faster than you can draw it out. You're going to look after your battery and you're also going to make sure that, that these you kept at a high level yeah. that you can use it every day most people will skimp go big on a battery but skimp on solar yeah better still go more on solar and less on it's like a bucket you put a big hole in the bottom of the bucket and you turn the tap on and the water coming in can't catch up with what's going out but if you put a bung on it and now that solar is now catching up but if you don't want to bung it you've then got to Turn more pressure on, more water in, more water, so more solar, more mm. solar. Mm. It's the easiest way to explain it to people. Okay. Well, you lost many, but I'm sure a few of the viewers. You, you, caught you're an ex-builder, not a plumber, so <laughs> what do you think? All right, all right. I think that's about it. I just wanted you guys to know what I'm, 
what I'm running and, and you know you're going to be cooking dinner for your family I use about 30 amps cooked dinner with an induction cooker and I'm, I'm boiling rice and then I'm boiling a big pot of water to put my these curry bags in the wild delicious curry bags get onto them so that is using a lot of power but I'm still able to normally wake up the next morning and the solar just puts it back in or a, you know drive up the road will put it back in getting the quality gear too like the Bushman fridges we'll, we'll do an episode on them but they draw stuff all they're so efficient don't forget inside here heats up dramatically while you're driving yeah and they are extremely efficient. Mm. But like anything, you know, you put it under really, really stressful, and, and, and it is gonna struggle. Yeah. But if you can keep air at it, and, and like what you've done, you've got loads and loads of space around it, yeah. it's allowed to breathe. Season, what are you doing, season seven? Oh, shit. Season seven, is you're, it? You're the expert with the back. I should be the expert cameraman. We've got the sun right behind us. Here we go, that's better. Season seven, you're doing? Season eight. Season eight? Okay. Um, right. So, season eight, we're gonna, Season nine, the next one. Season eight, you're doing this one, right? Yeah. I've got a surprise for you for season nine. Are you going to tell them? Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. And I'll tell you what, okay. <laughs> it's going to be next level. Okay. Um, it's already ordered. Yeah. So when you get back, um, or... The whole new power unit. Well, mate, we're looking at kitchen unit, the whole line yards. Well, there you go. I've used the Enerdrive Adventure now for, I've used Enerdrive for four years, three years. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's season three. I've had the Adventurer for at least two seasons. Love it, great unit. So I highly recommend it, but Nigel's saying there's another product that I'm gonna try. And that's the beauty of Wild Reach is I get to come out here into these harsh environments. You can see how much he's sweating. It's pretty harsh out here. And I get to test these products to their limits and then go to you guys and say whether they're good or bad. So I think you're gonna be stoked, buddy. I really do. Say goodbye, mate. See you, buddy. Uh, well, season eight is coming so jump over and subscribe to wild reaches because we're in this beautiful country up here in cape york far northern australia and um me and a mate have hiked over to this mountain before so that's an episode that's coming up there's a beautiful sacred site aboriginal um, art site over on the other side of that mountain that's coming but we're also heading way further up the cape and exploring some amazing communities amazing country i can't wait to share it with you guys so i'll see you next week for another three minute thursday we test them so you get the best of them ah oh, this is the spot Nice and smooth. Oh yeah. So, I forgot to tell you guys about pricing. How much is the Enerdrive Adventurer from Battery World? You can get you can get the Enerdrive gear from Battery World. There's so many stores all around Australia. So you drop into your local Battery World store. No idea, buddy. No idea? <laughs> all right, give us a rough price. Really? Yeah. Come on, I've been at the shows with you where you just, you talk all day and you seem to know everything. Yeah, but I'm I reckon yeah. they're about five, six, five, uh, seven. If you look in for the adventure anywhere from five up to six is the going there's rate. that much difference there's that much going right ground at the moment all right if you didn't hear that in a drive adventure anywhere from five grand up to up to five six yeah um you'll probably pay extra if you're going to go at Cy Marine's green and what about a 200 amp hour lithium anywhere from 22 2200 through to 2800 2200 to 2800 yeah. that's for the in drive though yeah, yeah. So there you go, there's your pricing. That's it, that's a wrap. Make sure you subscribe because that really helps to grow this channel. Subscribe, tell your mates, share it around, do all that stuff, and jump over to Wide Reaches and subscribe there. All right. You know, you don't have to pay mega bucks for an all out fish to install it. All right, so we, we've just been, we continued talking, and I realized that's why I wanted, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about in this episode was the installation. Like, what, what's the benefit? Why would you go one of these units like the Adventurer, the Tradie? The Lackey is it? The Traveller. The Traveller. The Explorer. So these are these are pre-made units. Everything is inside the unit. So you can just walk into a battery rod store, buy the unit, walk out, and all the, what's on the end is like an Anderson plug. Yeah, and connect your fridge up. But the advantage is that it is fully certified by Enerdrive. They've put the right amount of fuses, the fuses, the circuit breakers in the right okay. place. Yeah. Everything is just plug and play. So that's the difference, as opposed to buying all of that stuff individually, the DC to DC, the, the inverter, the 240 volt charger, all that stuff. Battery monitor. Battery monitor, yeah. and then trying to wire it, fuse it, all that. Yeah. Um, this is just all in one, it's all done by Enerdrive. Uh, what's the warranty on Enerdrive gear? Five years. Five year warranty through Enerdrive. Yeah. And uh, and even if you buy through Battery World or whoever, Enerdrive. it still goes under Enerdrive's warranty. It's, it's an Enerdrive warranty. Okay. Yeah. That's it. So that's the beauty of it. That's what I wanted to tell you guys that they're just like plug and play almost. Um, you need a auto sparky, I reckon, to run your cabling from your no. alternator back to the. No. no? You can do it all yourself. You can do it all yourself. There all you go. The, all, the, 
in all the manuals it comes with a line diagram. Okay. All right, wiring diagram in the manual. Yep. There you go. And the other advantage, let's say you sell your unit. Oh yeah, I don't know if you guys can hear Nigel, but I'm going to say what he just said. Um, if you want to sell it, so if you're, if you're going to sell your car, you can unscrew it, take it out, sell your car. Or if you want to sell the unit and upgrade, you can just take out four screws, take the thing off and um, and sell that unit and buy a big one or whatever you want to do. Yeah. Plug and play. Plug and play. Yeah, very easy to work with. So that's what I want to share with you guys.